Hi, I'm Alex from Southern Ukulele Store, and this week we're going to feature 10 ukuleles that we've never featured before. Or at least I don't think we have. I have done so many of these videos, I actually went back through for all of these and tried to figure out why there wasn't a listing kind of video and all of that stuff. You know, the technical stuff, the actual meat and potatoes of my job. And I thought, oh wow, a lot of these ukuleles are still on my list to feature. And I, for whatever reason, you know, whether another delivery came in or whether I didn't have another thing I wanted to compare it to, they haven't been done till now. So this is the most random assortment of ukuleles you could really ever ask for. 10 ukuleles that I should have featured but haven't until now. Let's go. The first ukulele we're going to look at today is the Kawaii KPT-1K. KPT-1K is a ukulele that we ordered in because we wanted something that was not Hawaiian made but around the same price as a K1 or a Koaloa KTM00 that showcased the kind of Japanese style of build. And what I interpret as a Japanese style of ukulele build is a slightly different body shape. Now this is actually a very modern version of a Kawaii ukulele. They do the Artist series and they do the Strummer series. The Strummer series ukuleles are actually more inspired by Hawaiian ukuleles, which kind of takes my point away. But ignore that for a second. You've got a slightly more slender, slightly more kind of rounded, curvier body than you would on a Hawaiian, uh, Hawaiian tenor ukulele like a Kamaka or a Kanalea. You have a 37mm nut width on this ukulele, so a slightly wider nut width, more akin to like an Anui Nui or something like that. With an ebony fingerboard and bridge, it's a high gloss finish. The koa on this ukulele, this is a kind of one grade koa, this is the standard koa. They do this ukulele in some really, I mean, ex extravagant looking woods as well. And what I like about it most is with the modern gloss finishes, they're so tight. The instrument has a kind of an instant percussive ring to it. So you get the Hawaiian koa sound, but you also get something that's very, very good for kind of accompanying you. If you're in a band, you know, you want to be able to kind of be heard over an acoustic guitar player. This ukulele's got lots of bite, lots of angst. The shape of the Kawaii Strummer series headstocks is really cool and quirky as well. It reminds me of a seagull guitar with these Goto open gear tuners. Another feature which we've seen on many ukuleles uh, in modern times is offset side markers. So you have a fret dot on the side of the neck, but you also have the side dot going towards you when you're playing. So I personally really like this because I tend to turn the ukulele towards me ever so slightly when I'm looking. So on my left-handed ukuleles with them on the other side, I really benefit from that. Anyway, the kpt one k is a ukulele that I should have featured a really long time ago. I feel really, feel really quite bad for the customer that asked me to order this in uh, to feature it that I uh, haven't. So let's give the kpt one k a play and see what you think. Next up today we have the Miller MG210L and it's absolutely criminal that I haven't featured this. I must have featured it in another video, I could not find it. If you found it and you want to put it in the comment section, great stuff. But for those that haven't seen this ukulele, the MG210L is all solid mango. It's a soprano long neck, so it's a soprano body, which is what I think Miller do best personally. Really nice traditional soprano with a 15, um, 15 inch scale length, so a concert neck, 35mm nut width with a mango faceplate to match with that really cool Miller logo. And then you have the open gear tuners on the back. It's a traditional style ukulele with a twist. It kind of has, to me, the evil Hawaiian koa vibes about it. You know, it's got the chiminess, but it's darker. That's what I like about mango best. You even have the little abalone sound hole rosette as well. So it's a little bit of sound hole decoration if you want a little bit of bling. I personally really like the bling because the abalone blue really goes well against the dark uh, darkness of the mango. It's just a lovely ukulele. I should have featured it before now, and now I have. So if you really want to know what it sounds like, stick around. I'm going to play it now.
Next up today we have the Ohana BKT 250G. This is a Barry tenor, which I believe is a trademark term that Ohana have come up with. It has a traditional baritone body but with a 17 inch scale length and a basically a tenor neck glued to a baritone body. This is for all of you people out there that want to tune baritone ukuleles to GCEA. This is going to do that. Unless you've got shovel hands, the biggest sausage fingers in the world, and you need the extra three inches that a baritone ukulele is going to give you across the neck. This uke compromises fantastically on that issue that many of you have where you kind of want to play ukulele, but you kind of want to play guitar. So many of you out there want to do that, and Ohana have catered to it. You have a solid spruce top on this model with solid acacia back and sides, which means you have the softwood top of the spruce, so lots of projection, loudness, but the acacia gives it a more kind of conventional ukulele sound. They also make a fantastic solid top model with laminate mahogany back and sides, the BKT70, which is the one that I featured many times in the past, but this one had just slipped the net. The high gloss finish helps as well because it tightens everything up, it's crisp, it's bright, but it doesn't really sound anything like a guitar, it sounds like a giant ukulele. You have a slotted headstock, an oven coal fingerboard and bridge with a really nice flower inlay on the 12. Hope that that is focusing for you. Um, it's a 36mm nut whip, so it's not even a narrow nut, it's actually quite a nice chunky neck with, with a slightly wider neck profile. So let's give the BKT 250G a play and see what you think. This cool soprano is a tiny piece of history. It's got a story of its own. Um, the reason we haven't featured it is because it arrived a day after I made a video on the rest of the range it's part of. And uh, I just assumed that it was here when I made the video, but actually it filtered through after. This is the Carla Trembesi Soprano, the code being a K-A-T-R-B-G-S. Carla really know how to give those things those catchy Mustang-like names. Um, and it's part of Carla's Metropolitan series, which is a series that's kind of launched, but not launched. It's in a state of limbo, I think, because you can see that it's there on the Carla website, but you don't really see any dealers have them at this point. I think we probably took the prototypes slash kind of first production run of these ukuleles. And because nobody knows they exist, it's kind of got lost in the shuffle, which is something that I, I'm guilty of too, because until yesterday, I didn't realize I'd not made a video on it. This ukulele uh, actually has a double pickup fitted to it by us. We had a customer um, order the ukulele, we fitted the pickup and then they changed their mind before we sent it out. Not a big deal in this instance. It's solid trembesi, which is a wood very similar, if not the same as Monkey Puzzle. It's got acacia-like qualities to it when you play it. It's not quite like acacia, it's slightly more kind of um, flat response in my opinion, which is great if you're a player that likes really percussive sounding ukuleles. Ebony fingerboard and bridge, 35mm nut width, and actually my favourite thing about it is the Carla headstock, which I think makes it look extremely classy. These do look to me like they're probably made in the same facility or certainly in the same area as the Pono standard ukuleles. But there are some differences. The body shape on this is vastly different to a Pono Soprano, which is really slender and kind of squashed in. Um, the headstock is different. It does feel very similar to a Pono though, which is not a bad thing. High gloss finish on the body with a satin finish on the neck. And front and back um, hardwood binding, probably ebony. Great ukulele, a great soprano. Someone out there is going to fall in love with this and give it a forever home. And who knows if there'll ever be another one. That's kind of part of the fun. <laughs> Let's give the KA TRBGS a play and see what you think.
Next up today, we're going to feature the little sibling of our ukulele of the year for 2022. This is the Aulufia Lelight Koa S. Now, once again, I thought I'd featured this ukulele, but actually looking back at the three videos I made about Aulufia last year, this one never got a sound sample. But what a fantastic ukulele. I mean, the tenor one is something we literally said, this has been the most popular thing of the year. Has a solid spruce top with this offset sound hole and a side sound hole to boot. You have solid Formosan Koa, which is, you know, marketing speak for acacia. So it's a solid acacia back and sides, but it is Formosan, uh, Formosan acacia. So it does actually have a kind of Pacific Island um, heritage to it. You have an ebony fingerboard and bridge. I love the way that the fingerboard is chopped off because it doesn't want you to play those high, um, high A minor bar chords there. You have a bound neck so the bound neck is a really nice figured maple on all of these i've not seen one that wasn't really regal and royal looking um standard el luthia headstock with the aged tuners the kind of a brassy aged color you also have a tiny inlay there of the el luthia inlay on the seventh fret these come with a really nice padded gig bag and if you're somebody that loves the sound of that El Luthia Lacoa S that we featured um, several times last year, this is a smaller version of it. It gives you the same bigger sound in my opinion. It's got just as much kind of uh, bite and depth to it. So let's give the Lacoa S play and see what you think. Okay, next up today we have another hidden gem from Enya. This ukulele is the EUC25D. Now, sometimes when you work around musical instruments all the time, you can just completely miss something that's excellent because you're blinded by the lights. And that's actually what happened with Enya's UK distributor. He had these in the stock room. But it was only when I found um, a video on Instagram of someone playing one, I thought, oh, that sounds really nice. I bet that's kind of an affordable starter ukulele. I asked him and he said, oh, I've got three of them. It's that kind of instrument. The EUC 25D is just another really good affordable uke from Enya. Solid top, so it's a solid mahogany top. Laminate back and sides. Satin finish uh, with a rich light fingerboard and bridge with a 35 mil nut width. Enya's headstock there with closed gear Enya tuners. As with pretty much all Enya's, it comes with a padded gig bag. This one also has two strap buttons fitted so you can get straight on with play and stood up if you want to. Um, yeah, one of the most affordable ukuleles in the entire shop, but that does not mean it doesn't pack a punch. The value for money here is fantastic. So let's give the EUC 25D a play and see what you think. Next up today, we're going to feature Carla's Tenor Resonator Ukulele. If you're wondering why we haven't featured this ukulele when it's been out for years and years and years, it's because we actually featured this ukulele in videos before I started doing the Southern Ukulele Store YouTube channel. I used to make kind of 30 second sound clips with the boys and put them up. And for six years, that little sound clip done on a phone in days before we used nice microphones and all the like um, that sufficed and it sufficed and sufficed and we didn't actually stock this ukulele for several years because they just weren't available and now here it is again i feel, feel like it's time that we give it a good quality sound sample it's a laminate mahogany body but really you're not buying into this ukulele for solid woods because the sound is coming from this resonator cone right here 
the metal resonator cone with the wooden biscuit bridge gives you a kind of early radio sound you know a kind of radiophonic sound something that's filtered and bright and nasally and unapologetic it's kind of ukulele that your neighbor is going to not like you for buying in fact actually if you do buy this ukulele i urge you to just kind of walk around your driveway with it like this and just see how long it takes for your neighbours to call the police. Um, this ukulele has an Indian rosewood fingerboard, um, like I say, laminate body, but with a perloid uh, kind of 1930s style Delta Blues binding. It looks like the tiny resonator guitars that you've seen over the years, and there's nothing wrong with that. The history of the ukulele and resonator ukuleles, resolales, goes back more than 100 years to early concert orchestras who wanted their ukuleles to be heard um, across the length of a concert hall before amplifiers. And then subsequently, you know, resonator guitars and various instruments with resonators on got into the hands of blues musicians and kind of journeyman musicians and that's what we associate them with today. So let's give the Carla Resonator Brass Tenor a play and see what you think. <laughs> Next up today we're going to take our very first look at Lanakai's Quilted Maple series. These ukuleles have been doing the rounds for a few years but it's actually only in recent months we've been able to get hold of them in the quantity that we like. They're available in various colours, they're available in purple and red and natural, with natural being kind of a yellowy colour, and blue and black and um, we think they're great. There's a portion of the audience watching this now who might look at this ukulele and go, oh, I like it, but you know, it's a little bit too extrovert for me. There's a portion of the audience that might look at this ukulele and go, oh, it's a laminate. And there's nothing wrong with being a, a bit of a laminate snob. We're all guilty of it. We're all guilty of it. I've done it in the past. And there's certainly ukuleles in the past that we've not restocked because we felt they didn't match up. The benefit of a laminate ukulele is if it sounds good out the box, it's never going to change. You know, humidity is not going to change it. You know, exposure to the sun or heat isn't necessarily going to change it in the same way it would a solid wood instrument. And although there's something romantic, and definitely there are benefits to solid wood instruments, uh, you know, I have owned plenty of laminate guitars and laminate ukuleles over the years because some of them are just good stage instruments. This ukulele is impactful, particularly if you went for it in a bright colour. It has the Fishman cooler system on, which is a fantastic pickup with a built-in tuner. The pickup as well, you know, I, I think that there could probably be a kind of idea that there's much and muchness about pickups, but if you look at Fishman's range of ukulele pickups, this is one of the better systems they offer. As a sound engineer, I used to do a folk club doing sound. You know, if someone turned up with this in their guitar or their ukulele, I'd be very happy that I could kind of make it sound good. You do have two strap buttons on this uke. It comes with a pod case. Best of all, it has a wide nut. It measures somewhere between 37 and 38 mil. Uh, that's the kind of uh, imperial to metric conversion there where it's not quite one or the other. It has a wide string spacing too with a gloss neck, an open coal fingerboard and bridge with a slotted headstock and these open gear tuners. And finally, the best recommendation I can give you is uh, friend, my friend Jiggy with Viggy. I was talking to her on my podcast recently and this was her first ukulele that she had. And she said to me, I've never changed the strings on it. I've had it for years and years and years. It's a tank. It can survive anything. And I love that. It's an almost kind of Boris the Bullet Dodger from Snatch Analogy. Heavy is good. Heavy is reliable. If it doesn't work, you can hit him with it. And I think that that is the perfect way to sign off this ukulele. Let's give it a play and see what you think. Heavy is good. Heavy is reliable. If it does not work, you can always hit him with it.
Who says laminate ukes can't have dynamics? Next up today, we have an Uma ukulele. This is the Uma UK15T. Look at this ukulele. Look how cute this ukulele looks. Look how old school it looks. Solid acacia top with laminate acacia back and sides. A satin finish, rope binding. It kind of reminds me of the old uh, Islander solid acacia series, which we've not had for a long time. It has a feel to it where it reminds me of the early days of Carla ukuleles, the early days of Lanakai, where this was the kind of deluxe model you could get if you had a budget of like 500 pound. But it's nowhere near that. This ukulele is kind of 200 pound and under. Comes with a gig bag, satin finish on the neck with a technical wood fingerboard and bridge. You have open gear tuners with a 35 mil nut width. And I don't know why I've not featured it before. I think it's because this ukulele is part of a series of Uma ukuleles that all have very similar codes. You've got like the UK 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, uh, 20, 30. In fact, that is kind of Uma's thing. And I just assumed that I'd done every single one that we had at some point. But this ukulele has been kind of on the wall and out the door and on the wall and out the door and on the wall and out the door and um, just slipped by completely unnoticed till now. Let's give the very cool Uma UK 15 ST a play and see what you think. Last up today, we're going to take a very special look at a Koaloa 2022 Red Label concert. Koaloa did two runs of Red Labels in 2022, and I'd featured the Cedar one, but had not actually featured this beauty here, which is all solid premium Hawaiian Koa, the good stuff. And one thing you can't really be angry at Koaloa about is that they don't often differentiate their woods in the same way that Kanalea do and other premium companies tend to do. Koaloa, they take Koa, they put Koa on a ukulele, and some of them look um, quite plain, some of them look striking. They just make a Koa uke, a mango uke, etc., etc. But occasionally what they do is a very special run built by the kind of master builders at Koaloa. And what you get is something that is just undeniably heirloom quality. Uh, that would only been a handful of these made. It's premium Hawaiian koa, so really lovely figured Hawaiian koa, selected probably by Paul Akami, who is a bit of a wood nerd, it turns out. He loves talking about wood, it's fantastic. Uh, you have a buffed gloss finish, so it's it's a buffed back finish, which reminds me of the early koa lowers. It's not quite so um, modern and, and shiny as you get on a KTM 00. The rosette on this ukulele and the inlays are all koa leaf um, kind of designed gold mother of pearl. So it's a gold mother of pearl rosette. And as you can see, you have these really lovely inlays on the fingerboard as well. Working up to the red label headstock with the red label logo and Goto planetary tuners on the concert, which is a black like Goto planetary tuner with a kind of almost like a black cherry looking uh, button. You have a gloss finish to the neck, once again buffed back to feel kind of lived in and played in. They come with a fantastic hard case. And it's the tiny details that you don't necessarily pick up on the first look that shame on me for not pointing out to you. You have front binding there, which is a really nice contrasting color binding with a little bit of um, kind of three ply uh, plastic trim to kind of make it set off against each other. You have as well a custom bracing design on this. This isn't braced like a normal koaloa. It has a kind of a ladder style bracing like you'd get on a maybe a kamaka. And finally, it's just extremely light. This ukulele weighs nothing. It's one of the lightest koalas I've ever held. And that seems to be a bit of a trademark of the red labels and black labels in general. Anyway, I couldn't think of a better way to finish off today's video. Let's give the red label 2022 concert koa a play and see what you think. It just sounds so good, doesn't it?
Well, there you have it, folks. We featured 10 odds and sods ukuleles that absolutely deserve to be featured in their own right, but shame on me. Slap on the wrists for not doing it until now. Um, please do let us know in the comments section which is your favourite. Is there a UK out there that you're thinking, I didn't know this existed until today. I want to know more. If so, you can contact us in store on 01202 You can email, email me at alex at ukulele.co.uk. I'd be really grateful if you subscribe to the channel just below the video here if you're watching on the actual YouTube um, page or app is a subscribe button. If you subscribe, I make videos most weeks. Some weeks I make two. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great day.